Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a almost holiday 4th of July adventure with Dr. White, Chemistry 1105. By the way, can you see I've got my 4th of July t-shirt on? Before I forget, I'd like to wish everybody a happy 4th of July. Excuse me, my nose was itching. And don't forget, on Monday, we have no class and no office hours because the school is closed because it's a long 4th of July holiday. And Monday the 5th, we don't have any classes or anything else. <clears throat> so don't forget that. You can show up, but I won't be here. Now, a couple important things. First of all, in about five to uh, five minutes before the hour, about 9.55, I will send out an email to each and every one of you, and it will have the password to open a PDF file. You'll have either version A or C, and you'll have an hour and a half to 11.30 to take test number one and to upload it to the assignment area of Blackboard. Now, uh, because I'm busy Friday, I guarantee by Sunday, 1 p.m., probably sometimes Saturday, but you never know what might come up. But by Sunday, 1 p.m., I will have your test scores for test number one in Blackboard. Sometimes Saturday after I post it or Sunday, I will also send out to each one of you an individual email with the points you got for each answer you put on uh, test number one. Now, normally the next class, I will go through the test answers on test number, whatever it is. Since we're not having class on Monday, I will do that on Tuesday. I do cut it out of the video. And if you can't make it to the lecture, when I go over the test answers, please feel free to come to my office hours to do that then I'll be more than happy to go through any questions on the test. And even if you are there, you can still come to my office hours. Remember in my class, in my world, there's no such thing as a dumb question. Now, since this 4th of July holiday, almost, I thought I'd do something a little special for you. Part of it is the lab. Did I time it good or did I time it good? I did. But I thought I'd teach you a few things that will never be on a test, but will help you at home. The first thing is what happens, and later in the semester, I'll talk about the chemistry, why, what I'm gonna teach you right now, but not today. But what happens if your drains clog? Say your kitchen sink or your bathroom sink or your bathtub is clogged and what you use is the following. Let me open up something. All right, thumbs up people. Do you see home, uh, instant power from Home Depot on your screen right now? Thumbs up people. Oh no, I don't, thank you. All right, now, when I moved into the current house years ago, within about two weeks, my kitchen sink stopped up. And being as it's a new house, I figured, all right, I'll do the right thing. I called the Roto-Rooter guy. He came out, Roto-Rootered it, and came and back to me and said, I see, you know, it was unclogged. And within a day or two, a couple of days, it's clogged again. And I had it had a six-month guarantee. So I called him again, say, hey, it's clogged, come back. He did. And he did his thing with his Roto-Rooter. 
And within a week, it clogged again. I was not happy, not because of the money, but at that time I was working full time and I was missing time at work. Um, salary, it wasn't that I was getting deducted, but I had things to do. Here I am wasting time waiting for him to show up and do his thing. Well, the third time he came out, he takes out this bottle of chemicals. I was like, I see that. He said, this will clean it out. And I'm an organic chemist, so I know it was in there. I realized this is a joke. He did it a lot, it, within a couple of days, it clogged up. So I figure, the heck with the money. I'm not wasting my time on this guy anymore. So I went to my local Home Depot, which is quite good. And I went to the plumbing area. And a gentleman who works there came up in that area. Can I help you? And I was standing in front of a whole wall of drain cleaners. And being an organic chemist and already just a chemist, I saw a certain, almost all of them were one type of chemical and the other was different. And, or I, there was different, but I wasn't sure what to get. So I asked them, what's the ones, all these drain cleaners, what do plumbers use? Would instantly said this one. I looked at the label and that was the one that had different chemicals than all the rest, which were the same. Later in the semester, I'll teach you about those chemicals. So I bought it and guess what? It worked well. And that product is hair and grease. It says on the label, instant power, hair and grease, drain opener. And this stuff works. I keep a, uh, this size bottle in my house all the time. When you use it, you should use safety goggles and glasses and put on a long sleeve top or a safe uh, lab coat. I have a lab coat at home just to be safe and follow directions. They say, leave it in for 15 minutes. It's real bad. I like on mine, I left it in for a half hour and lo and behold, it cleaned it out. And for about 10 years, nothing happened. I'm very, uh, very careful in my kitchen. I live alone. I don't put any grease down the sink and I'm very careful other things, even though I have a disposal. Uh, and it clogged up again, use that again, boom, it's clean. And about, I'd say three months ago, uh, my bathroom sink upstairs, I have two bathrooms, was clot, was not draining well. And I figured, well, I've been here 20 years. Maybe it needs time to be cleaned out, use that stuff, boom. I've had students use it and they love it too. So if you ever have a clogged drain and you forgot what I told you as to hair and grease remover, um, and I, I think Home Depot is the only one that sells it, but don't quote me on that. And I don't get any money back from Home Depot but it works like a charm and it did in my bathroom sink, which is that away. So that's number one I wanna talk about. Now, while we're in the bathroom, what's the worst thing in the whole house cleaning repertoire that Dr. White hates the most? And that's cleaning a bathtub. You know how you have that? You're welcome, this year. It works great. This is where proper safety equipment, they say it on the label too. Now, what happens? What's the worst thing? Bathtub. You know how you have that scum, I guess, that yucky stuff on the bathtub walls and on your walls around the bathtub. You know, you got to scrub it and scrub it and scrub it and it takes forever, especially if you let it go for a long time because you don't want to do it to begin with. And a number of years ago, I'm doing it and I'm saying, wait a second, you're an organic chemist there's got to be a better way. I thought about it and I found a product that I had known briefly about, but I said, let me try it on there. And it worked real good. And what is that product? Why don't you want to share? There you go. Is 
thumbs up people you see on your screen barkeeper's friend and barkeeper's friend is a powder you can get in a liquid i use the powder sometime i might buy it you can get it everywhere walmart jewel sells it my local valley sells it and it's a great product and what is barkeeper's friend it has a soap which i'll teach you about and it has what's called a acid in there and that breaks down the acid the scum in your bathtub and this is what i use the powder i gotta try a little soft cleanser next time i'm in a walmart or other places i'm gonna try that but what i do is i have one of those removable shower heads i take it turn it on hot water and spray down the walls and also the sides of the bathtub get it nice and wet with hot water then I take some of the powder and I sprinkle it on the walls and the bathtub walls too. Then use a paper towel, not a sponge, a good st uh, sturdy paper towel. And this lightly schmear, just an interesting Yiddish word, you know, rub it just lightly so it covers all the surfaces of the uh, bathtub and your wall. And do that with a damp uh, uh, paper towel so it's sort of like a slurry or uh, a, I guess slurry, if you don't know what a slurry is, sort of damp salt liquid mixture. And then wait 10 minutes or 15 minutes, then come back and with a wet, uh, you can either use the small and I cut them up so you don't use, you can use them more, the 3M uh, green scouring pads that are the green ones and just lightly rub it a little, or you can also do it with a paper towel that's sturdy, that's a little moist and rub it. And then I take my shower head that's removable and boom, 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 and it's done. An actual scrubbing time and also applying it is about six or seven minutes. In the old days when you had to scrub it and scrub it, that would take a half hour or more when it got really caked on. Yeah, I don't like doing bathtubs, so I wait until I have to. So if you want to clean, and also it works real good on pots and pans. If it's got a lot of gunk on it, you want to clean off. Again, wet it, hot water, sprinkle some in, wipe it around so it's coated, give it five minutes, and it comes right off real easy. And that's my special 4th of July gift to you part of it. And again, let me just show you that. It's Barkeeper's Friend. And it's not that expensive, by the way. Amazon is overpriced. If you go to Walmart, it's not that expensive. It's a couple dollars a can. Certain things Amazon uh, overprices. Where's this? Ah, they even sell it at Home Depot. And compared to the six to eight dollars at Amazon, it's two eighteen at Home Depot, and it's same thing at Jewel and other places are three dollars. Wow! <laughs> Keep an eye on Amazon. You're welcome. It works well. All right, I better get to work because I've got to get you out the door on time so you can take test number one. All right, since we're here having a test after I'm through today, I didn't want to do a problem set because you're probably studying, I hope you did, for test one. So today, let's go right to the lab. And as you know, Coming up soon is what? The 4th of July. And what does Dr. White love about the 4th of July? Fireworks. When I was your age, you're a little bit older. Now I'm a lot older. You can tell. <laughs> it's hard to hide. But anyways, uh, I and about three or four of my friends who are big like me, we'd go downtown to the fireworks uh, in Chicago on the lake by the band shell. That was before they had the coordinated music and fireworks. I don't like that. I just want 
give me fireworks. I don't want the music. I just want to see the fireworks. And we go and see that, and it was beautiful. And I've also been to Evanston. Uh, I grew up in that area, in the Lincolnwood area, and uh, Skokie, Evanston. We go downtown or go to Evanston. And other places in the Northwest suburbs now have good ones. So what's fireworks? Let's take a look. We had to keep going. There was no turning back. Sorry about the ad. Everybody see the fireworks? I hope you enjoy that. Oh, I love fireworks. But that's chemistry. What's happening? How do all those colors come about when those fireworks explode? Well, that's today's lab. No, we're not going to have you explode things, but you're going to learn how fireworks work. And how does that happen? Well, that's today's lab. And today's lab. It's called moving electrons from shell to shell. And it's also the flame test. Now, as I've taught you, all elements are made of atoms and they're made up of electrons, protons, and neutrons. 
and the protons and neutrons are in the center of the nucleus and the electrons are around it. Now there's specific electron, the electrons are located at specific distance in the shells and the subshells. Now, what happens when you add energy to an atom, like a heat from an explosion? The atoms of the electrons by heating it or shining light on it, when this happens, electrons jump to a higher subshell and shell. And once that energy is taken away because they're unstable, they drop back to the original shells. And when this happens, energy is given off. And that energy is in the form of light because different electrons uh, give off different amounts of energy when they're returning to different shells, different atoms give off different colors of light. And this experiment, part of it, you'll be uh, heating different solutions. We'll be using Beyond Lab Z in a Bunsen burner. And if we were face-to-face, -face, we'd be doing this in the lab today. And it's called a flame test. And you can use that to identify certain metals and the ions from certain metals. Now, let's look at YouTube again. All right, before I start this, thumbs up, people. Do you see flame test on your screen? Thank you. We're going to do a flame test on a number of selected compounds, primarily uh, group one and two ions. Alkali metals and, and alkali metals. These are aqueous metals. solutions, and we have just a inert metal loop and we're going to dip the end into the solution and put it into the flame and that excitation characteristic color is like a fingerprint for an element so we're going to look at a number and then we're going to ask you to identify some unknowns potassium it should be a lavender This is barium, green. You only look at the color initially when this she puts calcium. it in the flame. Calcium, sort of a yellow red. Strontium. This is my favorite. Lithium. And as you can see, when you put a, a chemical into a flame, you're adding energy. And when that energy occurs, you're causing electrons to go to a higher shell. And when it, came, it goes out of the hottest part of the flame, the electrons go boop and they give off that light. And because it's a certain boop, <laughs> but that doesn't sound scientific, certain amount of energy from certain shell to another, that's why it's a characteristic color for different cations, or maybe it's the anions. So what are we going to do in today's lab? Today's lab, you're going to be using Beyond Lab Z. And the first part is different cations. 
And what you'll do, and I'm going to show you this, here's the procedure, and let's go to Beyond Lab Z. Now, before I do that, I should mention something that a lot of chemists forget about. When you're doing an experiment, you should only change one variable at a time. When you're doing an experiment, you should only do one variable at a time. And it's helped me solve problems when other chemists get lazy and say, I'll change this and this and see if it works or whatever. No, one variable at a time. And in today's lab, something like sodium chloride, how many of you have ever cooked noodles or rice in a pot with water, boiling water, that you put salt into it? Sodium chloride. And if it boils over and you have a gas flame, which is normally blue, all of a sudden you see this yellow color. I wonder what's that from? Is it the sodium plus or the Cl minus? In this lab, you're gonna find out. So let's go to Beyond Lab Z. All right, let me check. All right, everybody see Beyond Lab Z on your screen? Click on the chemistry. Then, if I move this away, at the top, does everybody see the let me check my screen. Yes, you don't. All right, now does everybody see titrations, calorimeter, and again, inorganic at the top? Thank you. Click on inorganic. Everybody see the lab right now. And what you want to do. Uh, all right, put a test tube in there. I forgot that. And let's do, oh, I'm going to do my favorite. Click on SR strontium. And now it's in there. Now, if you take this and click on this and then see what happens when I take it and put it over. Oh, look, a red flame. And that's today's lab. You click on this, let's do that. And that shows you if you had put some of it in a flame. And that's today's lab. And when you're done, you take this, put it over here. And take another test tube, double click on it. And I could take, oh, I don't know, let's do copper. And you should try this yourself. Click on here or put your mouse over it. And then Click on the Bunsen burner. Oh, look at the color. Uh, Lily, let's see. Do I have it mislabeled? Uh, they have it as a plus two. The SR, I have it plus three. It's on here, plus two. Just look at the chemical symbol. Don't worry about the charge, okay? And that's today's lab, part of it. What you'll be doing is taking and the different ones in the following chart, you'll do that and be on lab Z. And the ones you'll do are these. And as someone said, this should be right here instead of a plus three plus. 
it should be a two, but not that kind of two. So if you see the wrong charge, just find the chemical symbol. Now, in each one of these, put the color you'd observe. Now, if you look at table one, all the anions is chloride, Cl minus. The difference is the cations, sodium, potassium, and all that. Now, which causes the color, the cation or the anion? Unfortunately, Beyond Lab Z doesn't have this, but I've done had students do this in the lab. And part two, which here's the procedure, if you were in the lab or not, this is the color you would get. Yes, they're all yellow. I'm not going to give it away what that means. And that's part two. Same cation, different anion. Table one was different cation, say a same anion. Now, to have fun, try different mixtures and look at the colors. Now, one thing I should point out, for the fair chloride, when you see it in real life, you would also see sparkly, sparkles, you know, like a sparkler in the 4th of July, along with the color of the flame being changed. But unfortunately, Beyond Lab Z didn't do that. And if you want to try your favorite pair, go right ahead. In real life or in the lab, students love doing that. Now, one way, as you've seen here, to add uh, move electrons is by heat. The Bunsen burner flame has heat. Now, another way, oh, I forgot part D. To make it interesting in part D, I have two unknowns. Now, since you can't do it in Beyond Lab Z, I gave you the results. Unknown A, if you were to do it, has white with sparkles. Unknown B is a real bright red. And later on, I'm asking you based on your data from table one, what's unknown A, what's unknown B? Now, the other way to make electrons move is by adding another form of energy. And in case you don't realize it, light is energy. Now, certain frequencies of light is higher energy. And one of those is ultraviolet. How many of you, when I was in college, I had my walls uh, glowing, you know, glow in the dark or ultraviolet posters of ultraviolet. And I had some glow in the dark too. One of Jimi Hendrix, a couple of dragons. That was the big thing back when I was in college. And You had a UV light that lit them up when the, it was dark in the room. Well, I'm not going to give you posters, but what I did create for this lab, unfortunately, we're going to have to do it, is on a card, we have different strips labeled A, B, and C. And you hold that under a UV lamp for three seconds. Now, since I'm not going to shut off the lights in a lab, because people would be dangerous people walking around in the dark doing other things. I came up with using a big jewel shopping bag and you put the card in there and you can see it. And that's what the glow in the dark paints are like. And what I ask people to do is record the color of each strip and how long it takes before it goes dark. Now, since some of them might take hours and our lab doesn't, uh, if it's greater than three minutes and it's still uh, glowing, put greater than three minutes. And because we're not going to do it in Beyond Lab Z, forget about the card number. In real life, I have different cards, so students have different results. But the line in A is red and lasted only 20 seconds, and B, blue, two minutes. And in line C, it's about a half inch wide on the card, was green and lasted more than three minutes. Actually, it's about five or six hours before it dies out. And 
by adding energy in the form of UV light, you're adding, pushing the electrons to a higher shell. And when it comes down, when you remove the light, it gives off that color. So there are two ways of moving electrons shell to shell. And when they come back down, they give off light. One is by heat and fireworks, the explosion, when it explodes, gives off a lot of heat. And that causes the electrons to go to higher shells with the chemicals they put in those explosives. And that's how it works. And that's today's lab. And you'll have questions at the end. And uh, if you, I have two videotapes, one I showed you, I didn't show, I'll show you the other one. If you're having trouble determining the color, uh, check out those videotapes too. And with that, I'm done for today. It's the 4th of July coming up. Oh, by the way, underneath it says down here, still standing, thank God. Uh, <laughs> we've came through the dark times and we're still celebrating the 4th. That's my personal opinion. And with that, any questions? Well, with that, I'm going to wish you a happy 4th of July. Don't forget, in about 10 minutes or so, I'll be sending out an email to all of you. And with that, happy 4th. Yes, you. Uh, the dark paints uh, in the lab, I've already done for you, but you have to answer the questions for that. Let's go back and look at that real quick. For the glow in the uh, in the dark paints, if we were in a real lab, this is face to face. This is what you would do. I gave you the data. So does that Lily answer your question? Yeah, that's answer our question. Well, um, remember, all questions are good questions in my class. Always. Thank you for your question. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to say have a happy and safe Fourth of July. Hopefully, you can I can go out my front lawn and watch for my supper from my front lawn. The fireworks. It's about three or four blocks away where they actually do that. But I can do it just from the comfort of my driveway. And with that, I'm going to say Gangazun. I'll see you on remember Tuesday. Also, today's lab. Don't forget, is due Tuesday. The one we did on Tuesday is due today. And I'll see you on Tuesday. Have a happy 4th of July. Thank you. Uh, gang Goodbye now. You too. Hey, wait, one question, one question. For the test, you said it can't be more than one page? What? For the test, you said don't upload more than one page? Well, op uh, upload it in one PDF file. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Does there's that means not uh, a lot of. I don't want an individual PDF file for each page. Okay. Did you do it in the lab or you did them all together in one piece? There, if you look at the instructions, and in, uh, hold on, let me open up Blackboard. For those of you who want, run away, gang gesund. I'll see you on Tuesday. And for the person who just asked the question, hold on, let's do this. Let me get out of this. Let me log into Blackboard. Let me go to student view.
All right. Do you see the uh, Chem 1105 test one, the assignment area? Mm -hmm. Do you see mm -hmm. right here mm -hmm. I have files, cam, scammer, both PDF yeah. and doc. And I also have instructions for taking and submitting the test and the lab reports. In this instructions, it gives instructions how to do a single PDF file. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And you can use Cam Sammer to do it with your cell phone, or do you have a scanner at home? What I um I had a class before they let us scan it through our um notes. Do you allow that or no? Only Cam Scanner. To do what? Scan the um the paper through our notes. Notes have a little scammer scanner. Yeah. In other words, if you write the answers on a piece of paper and then scan it that way? Yeah. That's perfectly correct. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank that, you so much. You're welcome. Have a nice day. I shall. Professor, I have one more question. All right. I do questions. Um. So I see that there's version A and then there's version C. Right. Um, All right. Half, here's, what's, here's what's going to happen. Half the class, I'm going to send an email with the password for version A, and that's the one you open up if you get that email. Half the class, I'll send an email in a couple minutes for version C, and it will say in the title and in the email, here's the password for version C, and you'll use version C. Does that help you? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. And with that, I'm going to say Gangazun, goodbye. I'll see you on Tuesday. Any last super last questions? Go ahead. Dina, what's your question? Uh, would you be able to explain the uh, electron shell again? Could I what? The uh, shell for the electrons. What about it? Would you be able to explain it? Like the moving uh, electrons from one shell to the other? You want to see the, uh, could you type out your question? I apologize with, uh, I'm having a hard time understanding what you're saying. And it's my problem, not yours. Okay. All right, are you typing it out now? Yeah, I am. Okay.
tell me about that. That all right. Tell now, me. when you say show me, is that in the Beyond Lab Z you would like to see? Uh, I mean, that's really up to you. I'm just not. All right. Sure. If you look at the lab, I have specific instructions. Have you been able to log into Beyond Lab Z? No, I haven't. Well, I do. Uh, all right. Do you see on your screen right now, starting Beyond Lab Z? Yeah, I do. In the procedure, that's step by step, just what I just showed. Now, you've got to get into Beyond Lab Z. If you can't uh, see me uh, Tuesday after lab, I'll have time and I'll be able to help you, okay? With that lab. Okay. But have you had a chance to contact the bookstore? I did email them. I'm not sure uh, if they got it, but I did try emailing them. Were they able to give you a new number? Uh, I didn't get a response back. All right. Well, you've got to resolve it with them. The other places, as I mentioned, I talked to you about how to get help from Beyond Lab Z. Okay. Because uh, the log, if you can't log in, let's do this. Let me log out of this and let me show you. If you go to Google, All right, you see Google on your screen? Yeah, I do. All right. Type in Beyond Lab Z and see where it says support? Yeah. Let's click on that. Now, do you see in the lower right-hand corner you see the blue uh, circle with the white inside? Yeah, I do. If you click on that, watch what happens. It opens up a bot, which you type in, where it says start typing at the bottom. Tell them you have an activation code that you purchased from the COD bookstore, and it says it's invalid. And they'll help you, OK? Because uh, that's something uh, it's not. No, I don't want to sign up. Hold on. But anyways, that will help you by typing in and they'll help you. OK, because that's yeah. something I have no control over with the activation. Once you can get into Beyond Lab Z, I can help you. OK. OK. OK, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And, uh, uh, one more question. I'm so sorry. Uh, did you say you wanted me to turn in the test at uh, 9 tomorrow or at 10? Tomorrow morning because of your special situation. Tomorrow morning. Okay? You okay. By 10, 10 o'clock is fine. All right. Okay. I got to log off because I got emails to send out. With that, everybody have a happy 4th of July. Gang gesund. Goodbye.